So let me start with this word, Wamanjeka. I stand on the land of the Wurundjeri people, the traditional owners of this place called Nam, now known as Melbourne. An English translation of Wamanjeka is welcome. But emerging leaders have told us that Wamanjeka means more than that. It actually means to come with purpose. So in this spirit, I come to this space with purpose. My name is Greg Morris. I'm a part of Mahana Culture, a movement with the purpose of awakening cultural dignity and building cultural responsive capacity in individuals, communities, and institutions. And in Mahana style, let's start with a story. Let's start with a tale. A good friend of mine said, we all drag cultural tales a thousand years long. So let me share a tale deep in my memory. When I was a boy, I would lie in bed and dream in a dream state would hear the sound of my mother speaking her language in a soft nighttime voice. She'd be on her phone to our Samoan family, catching up on the daily news once us boys were in bed. And as the familiar voice of my mum spoke these unfamiliar sounds, I tried to mimic the words and speak along with her. I always wanted to be able to speak this language because I knew it was a part of me. I'd imagine speaking to this other mum and wondering what we'd say to each other. I was so confused. Why would mum only speak this language when I was sleeping? Why was it always hidden and limited in the shadows and the darkness of my bedroom? As an adult, I asked her these questions. And she told me that it was to protect you, Greg. But what was she protecting me from? What was so dangerous? Why would she have to become this watchful mother bear? What did she need to shelter us from? And what could possibly be so dangerous about my beautiful, soft, warm, loving mum? And how could she ever be a threat to anyone? I had no idea at that young age of the racial and cultural wounds that had scarred her, of the diminishment and demeaning she'd experienced because of her culture and her colour. No, no idea at the time she decided to reimagine her children's future out of fear and to disconnect from her own story, from the thousands of years of her family's culture in an attempt to protect us from carrying those same wounds. In my exploration of culture, I started to see heroes and villains as a part of my cultural landscape that shaped me. So my mother, my mum was one of my heroes. Lying in bed, I'd hear her talking in language to her hero, my grandmother. And I wondered, did I have other heroes echoing beyond my mum on the phone? Did I have my very own Polynesian Avengers ready to rescue me, to fight the villains mum was protecting me from. In this ongoing cultural exploration, these villains became quite real to me. I learnt about the process of colonisation throughout the Pacific Islands and the systematic legalisation of indignities that slowly turned proud ancestors and their knowledge into shameful, haunting whispers that were limited to the four walls of my bedroom. But now motivated to listen to my heroic ancestors, my very own Avengers, I became conscious of this concept, te uliva. When translated means to beautify, to cherish and to care for the spaces in between. In my conscious mind, this is, was now a new idea, a fresh understanding. But as I reflected deeply, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, in my unconscious, I had actually experienced the reality of Te Uleva from my beautiful brown Polynesian mum, as she had beautified, cherished, and cared for our home, which I grew up in. For the last 20 years, as a community worker, my task has been to maintain spaces of doing no harm, of minimizing risk for whoever I work with. But I always felt that wasn't enough. 
but it fell short of what people and spaces really needed. And now armed with my new and fresh cultural knowledge, I came to my practice, or more accurately, my being in these spaces and in the community with a purpose, a new purpose and a new goal. With this reconnection of cultural knowledge, we at Mahana have reimagined it so we can draw on it and operate in it in real time. In this recreation, we have identified five markers that sit inside our Mahana Wayfinder that help us traverse unpredictable spaces that can be filled with trauma, pain, and loss. Wayfinders were common tools used by my Polynesian Avengers to navigate the Pacific Ocean, the largest continent on the planet, using markers like stars, the wind, waves, and ocean currents as guides to traverse these large ocean spaces between islands, populations, communities, and cultures. Our ancestors needed these wayfinders to show them how to respond to the ocean and what it demanded of them. Their wayfinders helped them to adopt an inner posture of courage and assurance, a posture that would help them respond confidently to the ocean's challenges, not to react to them. The ocean wasn't theirs to control, but with the help of their wayfinders, they could become aware of what they could do, but also aware of their limitations. So our first marker within our wayfinder is to recognize, to acknowledge there is a space between all things. In Samoan, this is va. And as Albert Went, the Samoan playwright and poet, said so wonderfully, va is the space between, not empty space, not space that separates, but space that relates, that holds separate entities together in the unity that is all the space that gives context and meaning to all things. In recent history, this concept of Ba has been violated through the process of colonization and occupation. This process is based on the concept of terra nullius, that the earth is nil and the space between is empty, void of relationships and connection. This ignorance, fueled and exploitation and abuse wherever this violation landed. So let's not be ignorant anymore. Let's recognize and respect the spaces in between. In Latin, the word recognize means to know again. Respect means to look again. So what do we need to know and to look for in the spaces between? Well, maybe it's alluded in Terlebar that spaces are cherished, beautiful, and cared for. This, I believe, allows us to know, to see the worth and value and the dignity in all things. So let us recognize together. Our next marker of our wayfinder is awaken. Here we begin to examine ourselves. We become conscious of our stories, of our blood, heritage, and history, our birth, place, and context. We can begin to understand our behaviors, our values, our attitudes, our beliefs that are woven into us and where they have originated. We also become aware of the choices that were made for our families down through our ages and affected us. This examination will expose the shadow, the light, the celebrations, the sorrows, the pains and the joys. But if we are courageous enough to push through, we become aware of our power, privilege, responsibilities, and capacities. All this should help regulate how we stand and how we move in these spaces. If we remain unconscious, unaware, we end up reacting. An awakened consciousness creates in us a responsive posture. So again, I ask you, let us awaken together. Another marker is to explore, to begin to discover the other. And as we enter this dynamic relationship, it's helpful to be unconditionally determined to understand. 
This should shape an attitude of curiosity, of wonderment, of humility, when asking questions of what's shaped the other and their relationship in the space in between. What stories and tales do they bring? What experiences are common and uncommon, known and unknown, familiar and unfamiliar to us? And how do these similarities and differences inform our collaboration between us? If we want to hold this space well, we need a posture of self-awareness and regulation. So the other feels they are seen and heard. So let's explore together. Another marker within our Wayfinder is to nurture. Here we start to see, to hear, and to feel what's held in the space between. Our eyes and ears and heart begin to be exposed to the pain and trauma, to the beauty and wonder that are embedded in our long and deep tales. Gabo Mate said this, safety is not the absence of threat, but the presence of connection. So it's this, connection, this presence of connection, of relationship that needs to be tended to, cultivated and nurtured. Connections based on celebration, care and compassion will build a presence that will ultimately and eventually help the space and those in it overcome and move past any threat. This is where we employ a resiliency and trauma-informed language that asks what's happening in the space between, not assert what's wrong in the space between. This is a crucial pivot. What is happening asks us for a posture of exploration, of discovery and curiosity. What is wrong fills the space with condemnation, shame and humiliation. That's the opposite of Te Ulava. So, as I said before, let us nurture together. And next, and maybe our final marker of our Wayfinder is to emerge. It's here that we hope that a new commitment of cultural dignity has been fostered in our guided journey. And that this commitment transferred and embedded in ourselves, in each other, and in the earth itself. Just as my ancestors trusted the stars and the waves to find their way, so we at Mahana trust the process of our Wayfinder to help us traverse spaces safely. And because in this new sense of safety, we may emerge different to how we started, hopefully with a new shared goal of flourishing and thriving in whatever space we occupy. So let us emerge together. And finally, for me personally, this Wayfinder has helped me make sense of my own journey. I've been able to bring my mother's hidden culture that was kept in the dark shadows, trapped in my bedroom, into the light, illuminating the dignity and worth of my Polynesian ancestors, who for so long were ghosts silently hidden in the corner of my room, and who are now singing loudly their new songs for emerging generations to dance to. Reconnecting with this hidden culture has helped me reimagine it in my current context and then recreate new cultural tales so that future generations can see and hear. It's mine and Mahana culture's hope that this Wayfinder helps guide us, inform us to create Te Ulava wherever we go, in our communities, in our institutions, and possibly even into our systems to better tackle our collective challenges, such as climate change, inclusion for all, and neighborhoods that were once ugly and not cared for, can then be transformed to become known as places of beauty, cherishness, and care. Bafatai lava.